What happens when the cure becomes the disease? It sounds like a philosophical question, but for all too many, it's a reality. It starts with a bone marrow transplant, which for some people is their only option. It gives lifelong uh, cures for these types of cancers in somebody who has no other hope. Basically, you rip the patient's immune system out at the roots and use cells from a healthy donor to seed a new one. Usually, this allows the new immune system and the patient to thrive, usually. Sometimes, not only is it attacking the leukemia cells, but it attacks all the other tissues and organs in the body. That's Dr. Kirk Schultz, an oncologist and director of the Cancer Research Program at BC Children's Hospital. He has spent decades studying this condition, graft versus host disease. And it can be devastating for young cancer survivors who needed a bone marrow transplant. Any part of our body can be affected and it causes uh, permanent scarring in, in tissues of the skin or the joints uh, so that a person can't move their arm and legs normally or walk normally or that they are a pulmonary cripple uh, if it affects the lungs. It can be very, very debilitating or fatal. For some patients, symptoms will fade over time and with treatment. For others, chronic graft-versus-host disease will be with them for life. And for everyone who gets a bone marrow transplant, Developing graft versus host disease is a very real possibility. And in children, it's 15 to 20 percent of the time, this chronic form of the disease, which is what we focus on, and in adults, it's 30 or 40 percent of the time. Just imagine what that's like for kids born with immune deficiencies, cancer patients of all ages. Every year, thousands of kids across North America are diagnosed with leukemia, a blood cancer that can devastate the immune system. So they wait for a donor, they go through aggressive chemo or radiation, or both, and they think they're cured, and then their doctor has to deliver this news. And I'll say, you're cured of your leukemia, that's the good news, the bad news, now you have a brand new disease that we've caused. This means many patients are stuck between a rock and a hard place. And one adult said to me, if I had known what chronic graft versus host disease was, and I'm suffering from it now, I'm not sure I would have gone to the transplant in the first place. When you're staring at the rock, it's hard to imagine the hard place being much worse. But graft versus host disease is devastating. Consider a normal transplant. If you try to do a transplant that isn't a good match, you get graft rejection where the recipient's immune system recognizes the donated organ is foreign and attacks it. And this can destroy the organ. But with a bone marrow transplant, the thing you're transplanting is the immune system. So if those donated immune cells realize they're in unfamiliar territory, things can go very wrong. Because to them, everything is foreign. So those cells might think that anything, everything, should be destroyed. And that's graft versus host disease. This means finding a good match is critical. We actually can't do the same level of mismatching as a kidney transplant, uh, because if you did, uh, it would be uniform, the graft versus host disease would be fatal in every single patient. So we have to do very much closer matching. But there is some good news. See, doctors have long suspected there's more to graft versus host disease than meets the eye. And now, Dr. Schultz and his team have found proof. A children's Hospital is the first place to actually show that it's more than one disease. That helps explain one of the most troubling aspects of graft versus host. The fact that finding the right treatment can be a shot in the dark. We know that patients fail their first treatments, they fail their second treatments, their third treatments. We have some patients going on to four or five treatments trying to get rid of the disease. And what we need is a much better understanding. What's the right thing to do right away? That wish could soon become a reality. Take a look at this. It's part of what Dr. Schultz calls a 360 view of the immune system of a single patient. Information about cells, metabolism, DNA, and so much more. Data like this was collected from hundreds of patients and fed into a specialized machine learning model that identified for the first time three subtypes of graft versus host disease. But the really amazing part came when they looked closer at patients with each type of the disease and which treatments actually worked for them. We have some initial clues that one of the types that we identified responds better to what is usually used up front and one doesn't respond at all. That information is invaluable. 
the idea that a simple blood sample could tell you whether a treatment will work, incredible. Consider the first step in trying to personalize what's the best treatment to start right up front so we get the best cure rates with the least amount of side effects. Dr. Schultz said that this could be used clinically within just three to five years, a blink of an eye in the medical system. And with more data from more patients, the tool will only improve, which could mean less worry for the kids who need a bone marrow transplant and for the cancer survivors who do get graft-versus-host disease, no more painful time wasted on treatments that won't work. Darius Mandavi, CBC News, Vancouver.